I'll follow your lead, brother. All right, cool. Am I in the right place? Sure are. I gotta keep it my lazy eyesight, you know what I mean? Oh my God. I gotta keep you over here in this so I can, get, can lock in on the outside and then actually, you can hang out my, over I, I found out through filming that actually my, my left one lags behind my right. So what's your good eye? My right is the strong, my right's the dominant eye. Okay, so that's good, that's why we lock in. <laughs> we lock in a good eye side. Welcome to another episode of $20 Chef. This time we got another special guest. In seven seasons of the Travel Channel with Man vs. Food. Killing it no matter what he does. Not to mention several other shows. We're talking author, my man, Mr. Adam Richmond. Thank you so much for coming on my show. Respect, thank you. You know, and Brooklyn guy. Yes, you're indeed. in New York, I'm here. You came to my kitchen, I can't believe it. I'm, I'm flattered. I'm honored. The first thing I did, uh, full disclosure to you guys, I asked him about the boxing match right when I walked in and I was, there were some amazing photos on the way in. I, I think you should be very proud of those. Good for me, you know, it just added to my 2019. You know, I knock out a hack. I'm hanging out with some awesome chefs. I'm hanging out with, and look, now look who I got in my kitchen. So you came in, what do you got for us? What are we making today? And I love the fact that you keep it real, that th this isn't like, you know, we're doing like a swap out and something we've been baking overnight and we're gonna reach in the oven and pit, pull out a finished dish. You guys are gonna see the whole thing. Simple, simple, simple. It is um, garlic shrimp tacos with honeydew sriracha salsa. So the coolest part is you can actually start this recipe the day before you actually want to make it. Crush about four cloves in some extra virgin olive oil, leave it overnight, and the flavor will be absolute fire, and then you can just brush that on the shrimp. The other thing to start ahead of time, if you put the skewers in water, they don't burn. Yep, so we got, because we're gonna skewer our shrimp. Mm -hmm. We're gonna hit them with a little bit of that oil on top with our little brush here. Exactly and right. And then we're gonna uh, throw them over here in our skillet. Exactly right. Now the, the honeydew sriracha salsa, you already started yes. for me. So I cut up some honeydew melon like you wanted me to. I put in about a quarter cup of sriracha, maybe a little bit more because you know that's how, you know, we're not soft around here. Absolutely. Now what's really cool is, first of all, obviously you can see that it's gonna take on a little bit of the color the sriracha so it's gonna have that nice orange and it's gonna join all those ingredients in the pico I was explaining right before we started rolling that this is actually inspired by the Jewel Hotel in Dallas um, an amazing chef there made a charcuterie board with a bunch of um, he did honeydew and cantaloupe and when you would eat it it was spicy and I couldn't figure out if it was dusted with something or injected with something or brine and he said he cryovacked it he vacuum sealed it with sriracha so I don't have the money the time or the patience to have a, a cryovac machine in the house so I do it my, my late oh, father okay to do uh, so shout out to Jeffrey Mark Richmond he used to do this because Jews cannot abide a stale bagel so we would do this boom I knew a guy used to do a quarter pounds. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty dank. This is this is as sticky icky as I can go now that I'm on television. And again, value wise, and I love that you always keep it so real with the money. We're, look at what we're buying: one bunch of cilantro, yep. one large white onion, two would, tomatoes, four to six plum tomatoes, yeah. between four and eight cloves of garlic because we're putting garlic in the oil and a little bit in the pico de gallo. So we have this beautiful salsa. And then, chef, do you want to combine yes. all these bad boys together? So we have jalapeno, de-seeded. The seeds are where the heat is. It's also not a ton of flavor. And be careful, I, I was a bit of a um, of a poussoir and I used the spoon to, to take the seeds oh, out. Yeah. But uh, he actually used his thumb like the warrior of the ring that he is. I can't, I gotta do I just have enough patience. I have ADD, so I just have to, I used to try to do that, uh -huh. and I just, I just couldn't do it anymore. So First now. time I ever made uh, ceviche, I finished, I washed my hands, I went to the restroom, and uh -oh. it was oh. awful. I slept with an ice pack in my shorts. All right, so <laughs> I'm also right now gonna take some lettuce I'm gonna shred it ahead of time. That's just gonna be one of the condiments that we're gonna use. All right, that's beautiful. And obviously you could buy store made pico de gallo if you want, but again, but it's, that's so much fun. All right, so obviously, I mean, this is a nice quick, almost like a quick lunch, or maybe you go to do something. This is a good light dinner. Absolutely, we're only talking about a pound of shrimp and got a peeled and de-veined. Yeah, it's not a vein, it's just a shit trap. It literally is a track of shit. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It is, a tra it, is, it is like the later films of John Travolta. It is just a string. Of shit. I mean, but that's just me. I love you, John. And obviously, while we're here, and I'm, I'm excited about it. You can. We're talking about your book, Straight Up Tasty. Yes, and sir. To explain what, what it really is, it's basically your journal of your travels and what you've eaten and what you brought back. I mean, the book should cost a thousand dollars just alone from somebody to, to have that that much time consuming of a body of work, you know, all of the places you had to go to just to come back and get that information. I mean, I'm pumped to read this book. Thank you, man. I guess that's the thing, right? Like people used to say, we were, we were talking about Pulp Fiction before we started filming, how Tarantino was like the ultimate mix master. He took a little bit from Grindhouse Cinema, black exploitation, old Samuel Fuller war movies, and he kind of mashed it all together into this other thing. And I think that's what great dishes do. And it works because people are open to different influences. My thing is this, I used to collect unemployment. I used to be on food stamps. 
And so I never wanted to do recipes that necessarily called for like, you have to have a terracotta paella mm -hmm. dish. Nah, not at all. And so that's why I just want to make stuff that was straight up tasty, stuff where there was a direct lineage. So I can say this was inspired by the garlic oils that I saw things basted with in Texas and in England. And the salsa is inspired by a hotel in Dallas and it's easy and it's literally shrimp, salsa, lettuce, tortilla, done. So you, you know, want to mix, you want to mix the honeydew in? Yep, sure do. You know, like we were saying earlier, I, I can't believe I never thought of this, you know, being from LA and just eating fruit off the corner in the little stands where the guy would just throw Valentino hot sauce and lime and any, and he had like eight different fruit. Right. Why didn't I ever think that just take that and make the, chop it up finer and make it a salsa? Yes. I think that's what I mean is that food doesn't belong to the leather elbow patch Tom's shoes set any more than it belongs to the sweater tied around the shoulder with Muffy and Buffy in the Hampton set. Like food's everybody's and I don't give a shit if it's like the corner pretzel or if it's like Chateaubriand. It's like our stuff, it's our language. And you know what, and you brought it back. Hell I'm yeah. grab the shrimp out. Let's, let's grab the shrimp and start talking. skewering them. So we'll put about, I guess, four per skewer. Okay. And um, yeah, Get you just wanna make sure here. you have each part of it. Now the trick with any kind of seafood is you want to actually undercook it because there's enough residual heat in oh, seafood that will finish thing? cooking it, exactly. Shrimp are a little hardier, but the problem is they will get super rubbery if you end up overcooking them. I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna be a renegade here. I'm gonna go five on there because there's gonna be what? enough room. I know, I know. Cut! <laughs> we'll lay them in there and then just using a brush, get real deep into those chunks of garlic. Again, the flavor will marry if you leave this uh, for like over a night. And then we're just gonna really, really be generous and slather it. Now, sometimes if I'm gonna wait to grill it, I may actually even leave some of the chunks of garlic right on it. I will totally admit this is something that I've stolen from my one-time soccer teammate, Gordon Ramsay. Leave the herbs on, put nubs of butter, and then leave the garlic, the fried garlic, or thyme, or coriander shallot. Leave it right on. Shallot. Shallot. That was the hardest part, man. I did a, a cooking show in England called Barbecue Champ, and I had to, look, like, I couldn't say uh, zucchini. I had, I had to say courgette. I couldn't say eggplant. I had to say aubergine. Underwear is pants, and pants are trousers. I was so ass backwards. I needed that's so whole, much That's help. a whole new shift of rules going on there. Exactly right. So the trick is to have your skillet um, about medium heat. You want them to be pretty hot. It's th That's the big, big, big key. The other thing is the tortillas. We can take them out. Are you a corn or flour guy? I'm a, I'm a corn guy, but obviously with seafood, there's, you know, I mean, but it has to be, you know, warmed up properly. And I get them black spots in there. I've always liked the taste of corn, but I don't like that it's brittle. I don't like that it breaks. Yeah, I like it's got the, a very short life. I like the tear of flour, but I learned a trick from an ex-girlfriend. If you take a stack of them and you put them in a moistened clean towel and microwave them, they become super uh, puffy and pliable. And you can keep them in the microwave. So if you're doing like a taco party, it's a great way to just keep them warm. Yeah. Easy peasy. I think we're ready to assemble. All right. Oh, actually we forgot one of the key elements for the pico and it's staring me right in the mug. And that's obviously gonna be a little bit of lime juice. Oh, gotta get that in there. Have to. And then we also, obviously you could always finish each taco with a bit of lime. I'm gonna food. give it a sample. I can't, I can't. Get in there like swimwear. Working? I like the honeydew because it's not overwhelming. It just plays a perfect sweetness, you know? Thank you, man. We've brushed down with our garlic oil, all of, all of our shrimp skewers. We're skewered up. Go ahead. You know what? It's an honor to have you on my show. I'd love for you to do it. Thank you very much, Chef. Appreciate you, Sean. Thanks, man. All right. Let me layer these bars down. Try to overcrowd the pan. It's going to take a few minutes, so this is going to be nice. Tom, ladder can. All right, shrimp's down. Sauce is ready, you know? Oh. So with, once we start seeing that orange, which you're already starting to see, we're seeing them go from that kind of weird translucent, kind of milkyish color to a more opaque white and orange. And uh, I say this to my fellow white chromosome, hairy chested mouth breathing dudes, stop messing with stuff once you put it on the fire. Don't press on your hamburger. It's another special guest coming in with that clean hot tip right there. Right? And rest it. So meat or fibers, they contract under heat. You want them to actually rest. Beautiful, and I, think, shrimp I think these guys look like they are just about done. And in fact, you can keep basting them with that garlic oil. Perfect. Oh, hallelujah. So again, those are just about done, but I want to take them off before they're like done done. So the, the residual heat will still keep them a little springy as opposed to, you know, what did I just yes. eat, like a spalding ball. Okay, I'm going to cut up some lime wedges. Beautiful. Also another little sort of quick hack that they have like all the flavored tortillas and stuff. Again, yeah. you could use your favorite spice blend. You could toast it up in the pan itself and just sort of roll the pan, roll the tortilla in it 
and it will pick up those flavors. Oh wow. I kind of always wanted to make it, and I probably shouldn't say it on camera because someone will do it. I kind of always wanted to do like an everything bagel tortilla. Oh. Is there a plate I can yep. lay these on? Here you go, throw these on right here. B-A-A, -A, beautiful. So we'll get these guys out. Now, do you do it? Uh, do you do the skewers to get more, just to make sure you get a perfectly even cook? Exactly, they all hit the pan at the same time. It's also, you don't have to saute, they go down together, but also, this is the other reason I use the skewers. So I can take one right. of these guys, and then I'll throw a bit of lettuce down. Okay. Fold it over, pinch the last scrimps, and pull oh. it out. And then you have it, and then you can put your salsa right on top of it. Just make sure you got a little bit of everything, and I run it right down the side there. There's your limes over there. Exactly right, and then you have your there taco. There it is, big old huge taco right there. Now this one, you only need one or two. I mean, I mean two, you're, you're, you're doing good here. Oh, absolutely. I'm gonna come yeah. in here with one. All right, this is nice and hot. Yeah, it is. A little wrap there, pinch down on the guy right here. Mm-hmm. Perfect. There you go, chef. Let me just lay this right in here. A little more melon. Look so, at that. You know that melon in there? Two big ass tacos. And it's a really easy way to feed like a bunch of people. Like that's one of the things that I've always loved, especially if I have my boys over for like yeah. a game. Mm. Mm. Seafood, fruit, and citrus. That's, that might be my top three buddies. The garlic oil really steps out here. Mm -hmm. And without having to add cheese and queso and crispy bits and pork and other things. I look up to what you do because all I want to do, once you go out and travel one or two times, mm -hmm. and you get that you get that bug, you know, like you just, well, I gotta do this everywhere. I wanna go see more stuff. I wanna mm -hmm. see more. Because it makes the most smallest mundane things exciting. Walking to the corner to get a coffee is awesome. Here you gotta run down, get it, whatever. It's not nearly the, the adventure it is if you're somewhere you've never been before. You're 100% right. Like, how many cultures of the world walk around and they, they, they start their day with coffee? I mean, everything from the Spanish to the Basque mm -hmm. to the Portuguese to the Ecuadorian and so on, that you're right, that it's like the, the most average experience is so much more than if you're open to it. And having a cup of tea in England and having a cup of tea in China are both inexorably linked with the culture, but the same thing like having a potato in Idaho and a potato in Ireland they should taste different. Mm -hmm. It should be a different experience. And that's what I think is so dope, that you can use a touchstone like a taco and then reinterpret it. Hey, get your life together, okay? <laughs> get a little culture in your life. What you need to do is, you need to go and you need to, take, you need to soak in the where somebody else has gone on the adventure and they're back to report it. And that's the most important thing to me. I just love all the little small nuances and I'm, I know you've captured it in the book. Thank you, man. I'm excited. Make sure you guys, straight up tasty, Adam Richmond. $20 chef, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for being on my show. Been an honor. Boom. He didn't hit me. I'm super psyched. <laughs>